So um, today we're going to be doing an empirical formula lab where we're finding the uh, empirical formula of an unknown copper chloride compound um, with an unknown amount of waters of hydration. Uh, this one goes along better with unit four um, because it involves a chemical reaction in order to be able to separate the copper and the chlorine. So the first thing we want to do is find the mass of our empty crucible. And I got uh, 32.89 grams. Now you can use an analytical balance for slightly more uh, precise measurements, but I found the hundredths place is usually pretty good. And then I'm going to add a small amount of our hydrate. Now the copper chloride hydrate is this green or it's like a tealish color almost. We'll record the mass again. And I have a 34.14 grams of our hydrate. And again, it's a hydrate because it has that water present. Now we are going to um, heat in order to um, isolate the copper chloride compound uh, and evaporate all of the water out. So we're going to heat that on a hot plate. You need to make sure that you are continuously stirring so that the compound doesn't burn. Um, if it starts to turn a black color, that's how you know it's starting to burn. But you'll see it turn kind of green and then eventually brown as it is dehydrating. Okay, so now that it's turned mostly a brown color, we're going to take it off of the heat. Now you can use a Bunsen burner or a um, portable torch to heat this, but I found a hot plate works pretty well. Um, and you can see that brown color, it has not turned black. We'll record the mass of this. I got 33.83, but we're going to continue to heat because we need to make sure that it reaches a constant mass. Um, so that way we know that all of the water has evaporated. Okay, so after a second round of heating, the mass stayed the same, so we know that all of the water evaporated from our hydrate. So now we're left with just our anhydrous um, copper chloride compound. So that's going to help us find the amount of waters of hydration, but it doesn't help us find the um, ratio of copper to chlorine. In order to find that, we have to do a chemical reaction to split the copper and the chlorine from each other. So, to accomplish that, the next step is to do the reaction. You need to make sure that your um, crucible is pretty well cooled down so you don't crack it. But then you're going to add some um, deionized water to the crucible. So I'm going to add that in slowly. It's going to rehydrate and turn back to this bluish green color. And I'm going to transfer that to another beaker. Now it doesn't really matter how much water that you use, um, as long as you have enough to dissolve it. So now that it is um, re-dissolved in water, we're going to react it with some aluminum, and this is going to make a single displacement reaction or single replacement. Uh, the aluminum wire is going to react with the copper chloride compound, and um, the aluminum will displace the chlorine. So you will be able to get solid copper as a product. So I'm going to just kind of coil the end of this up like this, and it makes a little stir rod, and I'm going to stir. And you want to keep going until all of the copper has precipitated out of the solid. You'll know all of the copper is gone because your solution won't be blue or green anymore. The copper ions are what's giving it that bluish green color and uh, you can see the copper forming already. So let's just keep stirring until all of the copper has precipitated. And to speed it up a little bit by making sure that we have enough um, surface area of aluminum, you can add a little bit of hydrochloric acid on the surface of the aluminum wire. That's going to get just the copper to leave and expose the aluminum. See the bubbles. It's just a little more. 
and then you can keep stirring and keep doing it again. Keep going until all of the copper is gone. Okay, so when all of the copper has precipitated out, you want to get a dry filter paper and record the mass. Then I'm going to place the filter paper into the funnel. I'm using a Buchner funnel because I have that. Um, you can use a, any funnel with a flask um, and you can even just do gravity filtration. I'm going to do vacuum filtration today. Uh, so you wanna make sure that the filter paper is down and makes a really good seal in your Buchner funnel. Like that. And there we go, nice seal and then you can start to filter. I'm going to go ahead and pour in my solution. And then I'm going to connect up my um, vacuum. So from the sink, I have the tube coming out of the sidearm of the aspirator, and that's going to connect to the sidearm of the flask here. I need two hands for this. So now that you've got the side arm attached properly, you can turn on the water flow to the sink. And as the water is passing down through, it's going to create a negative suction in this tube to speed up the filtration of your liquid. And I can continue filtering. I'm going to use a um, wash bottle to get all of that extra copper that's still up in the beaker and get that down into the filter paper. Once you get all of that copper out of the beaker and onto the filter paper, you want to make sure that you wash it so that if there's any additional aluminum or chlorine or hydrogen ions, uh, you want to make sure that that's all passed through the um, filter and on into our sidearm flask. Uh, and this is true anytime you're doing um, any kind of precipitation reaction with filtering, you want to filter, wash, uh, and then we will take this out for drying. I like to use the um, corner of a scupula to kind of lift up the edges of the filter paper, and I will transfer it onto just a paper towel. Um, then the paper towel is going to go into the drying oven until all of the water has evaporated. So you want to make sure it reaches a constant mass. Now, um, you could just leave it to sit overnight. Um, you could also use um, like uh, a desiccant of some kind if that is something that you have. Um, drying oven works well for us, uh, but you want to make sure that it does dry to a constant mass. So while your filter paper with the solid copper is drying, I think that this is a great time to have students clean up, uh, but also you can um, have them start doing some calculations. So you can do um, the empty crucible and the um, crucible with the hydrate. If you subtract those, you'll get just the mass of the hydrate. When you subtract here, you get a 1.25 grams of hydrate. Then you always wanna use your final mass after um, dehydrating. Um, ours happened to be the same. I just got lucky that time, but you always want the, to make sure that you reach a constant mass at the end. Uh, and subtract out the empty crucible to get the mass of the anhydrous compound, which was 0.94 grams this time. Then we can go ahead and subtract. We have our hydrate with the water minus the anhydrous substance to find just the mass of water that evaporated. So the 1.25 minus 0.94, you get a 0.31 grams of water that evaporated. Okay, so our solid copper has been drying. Um, I took it out earlier and weighed it, um, and I took it out again and weighed it, put it back in, and so you wanna keep going with that cycle um, until it reaches a constant mass so you know that all of the water has evaporated. And so um, this would be the final time. Yep, 0.65, so it has not changed from the last time I weighed it. Um, so I can record that mass. And uh, you can see that the filter paper with the solid copper is 0 0.65 grams. And so if you subtract out the mass of the filter paper, you get that the mass of copper that we formed was 0 0.26 grams. 
All right, so let's go ahead and start to figure out our empirical formula. We have the original mass of the anhydrous, so just after dehydrating it, was 0.94 grams. And after filtering and drying, our mass of solid copper was 0.26. If you subtract that, you'll get the mass of copper, which was 0.68 grams. Okay, so then we need to change grams to moles using their molar masses. Copper, 63.55 and um, chlorine is 35.5. So when you divide there, the mass of copper that you get, uh, I'm sorry, the moles of copper is 0 0.0041, and for chlorine is 0 0.019 moles. Then to find the ratio, you divide by the smallest. So we're going to divide by 0 0.0041, and we get uh, just about, um, sorry, that one should, is exactly one. This one is just about a one to five relationship. Um, now, so that would mean your formula is CuCl5. That is not the true relationship there. Um, copper doesn't typically form plus five ions. Um, and at this point, once the students have done their calculations, I'll usually give them the actual formula so they can see. Um, so in this case, it was CuCl2, copper 2 chloride. So this was our experimental, and this was the theoretical, or the uh, true value. Um, and so the reason, a couple reasons why they might um, have a much larger amount of chlorine is due to a smaller mass of copper being measured um, as of your final result. A couple things that could have happened there. Um, you could have had some of the copper sticking to the aluminum wire, um, so they didn't make it to the um, filter paper at all. Some of the copper might have been stuck in the funnel and didn't make it to the filter paper to be dried. So if you had less copper finding its way to the filter paper, you would have more chlorine uh, when you subtract, and that would lead to a greater um, chlorine to copper ratio. So again, I usually tell them, like, okay, so the real one's CuCl2. So that way, um, when they're going to find the then waters of hydration, they can use the CuCl2 um, to hopefully get maybe a little bit more uh, accurate results there. So Cu, Cl2. Um, but you can have them go all the way through with that um, experimental result and see how they go. Um, and it's entirely up to you. So now that we have our formula, I want to use the molar mass of the Cu, Cl2 and the molar mass of water to find the moles. And I got uh, 0 0.00. 70 moles for the CuCl2 and for water 0 0.017 moles and then you will divide by the smallest one in this case 0 0.007 0 0.007 and you get uh, just about 2.5 to 1 so that means you would have for every CuCl2 there are 2.5 waters although typically we don't use fractions for hydrates so you would um, have them round CuCl2 to 2.5, I'm sorry, to 3 H2O. Now, the actual uh, for this one, the, the theoretical true value is CuCl2 with uh, two H2Os. And so we have uh, more waters than expected. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you could have gotten that error. Um, maybe some of the copper chloride uh, splattered from the original crucible. Um, so that way your change in mass was larger than expected during your dehydration. Or some of the CoCl2 could have decomposed and got too hot and actually reacted. Um, if they found a water of hydration that was less than the expected one, um, that would mean that maybe they didn't dehydrate enough. If they didn't uh, dry it to a constant mass, then that water of hydration would be lower than expected. Again, this lab um, fits 
pretty well with unit four because it involves that single replacement reaction, although you could absolutely do it with unit one because for the most part it covers just empirical formula concepts. And um, it is a good one for looking at a lot of different um, experimental sources of error and how the error affects your final calculations for each of those things. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a good bang for your buck with this lab. There's a lot of uh, good uh, learning that can go on with this one experiment.